Hi, and welcome back to U.S. History with Mr. Snyder. Today, we are going to finally get into the event that drags the United States into World War II, the attack on Pearl Harbor. Our learning targets for today are to explain why Japan decided to attack Pearl Harbor and describe the attack itself. We'll outline how the U.S. begins to mobilize for war after the attack, and we'll summarize the course of the war in the Pacific during the summer of 1942. So Japan, as we know from our previous research, has um, imperialized a lot of the Western Pacific. Their goals are to set up puppet governments in China that are loyal to Japan and to keep using China for a natural resources. And China is actually in the middle of a civil war, and that's why they uh, stop. They're, they're politically in chaos, which means they're easy to invade. They actually have to stop their civil war and unite again to fight the Japanese uh, during World War II. And they're led by Chiang Kai-shek, who is the Chinese general. Uh, Japan seizes J uh, the Chinese territory anyway because they don't have any organization at when China has halted their civil war. So things that Japan has done, they attack Manchuria, they seize more Chinese territory, and they enter into the pact with Germany and Italy, and they become the three main Axis powers. The United States. In, does not agree with Japan imperializing, so in an effort to discourage that, they stop selling oil, iron ore, planes, and steel to Japan. And this oil is really important to Japan because oil, imported oil is most of Japan's consumption, and their military will screech to a halt if they can't move their trucks and planes and tanks and everything like that. So in 1941, in retaliation for that, Japan invades and defeats uh, what is now Vietnam, uh, controlled there by the French. The French were imperializing Vietnam. The United States responds to that by freezing all the Japanese assets in the United States so that they couldn't withdraw any of the money they had invested in the United States. So why would Japan attack Pearl Harbor? Well, it's not officially a United States state at this point. It's a territory. It's the hub of the U.S. Navy and Pacific. It's a great ship or place for ships to refuel uh, uh, while crossing the Pacific Ocean. And it would render the U.S. Pacific Fleet uh, useless for at least three to six months, depending on how they uh, respond to it, leaving Japan to... Uh, imperialize the rest of the Pacific Ocean without anybody to stop them. And so on December 7th, 1941, and that date's important, uh, there is a surprise attack on Sunday morning by the Japanese. So two waves of attack, totaling 353 planes, bomb the ships at Pearl Harbor. The U.S. losses include uh, not that much. I mean, yes, 2,388 people were killed. There was a lot of, uh, it, it was the biggest attack on the United States until 9-11. Um, we lost two battleships, two destroyers, and 188 aircraft, but it could have been a lot worse. On December 7th, 1941, the foreign war came to America. In the space of two hours, a Japanese air assault on Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, decimated the U.S. Pacific Fleet and killed nearly 2,500 servicemen. Within three days, the world was at war. The president braced the country for the challenges that lay ahead. We are now in this war. We're all in it, all the way. Every single man, woman, and child is a partner in the most tremendous undertaking of our American history. Just two years earlier, the U.S. military was weak and the nation ill-prepared for battle. But as events overseas became increasingly ominous, the country began to rebuild its armed forces. December 7th shocked the nation into dramatic action. Remember Pearl Harbor became America's battle cry. Eager young men, anxious to fight, flocked to armed services recruiting offices. Over five million volunteered for duty. Ten million more were drafted during the war. After eight weeks of basic training, these new recruits were battle-trained and ready to fight. 
New soldiers were given uniforms, weapons, supplies, and standard haircuts. Everything they needed was a government issue. It wasn't long before soldiers themselves were being referred to as government issue or GIs. Americans from all walks of life and ethnic backgrounds signed up for the armed forces. Over one million African Americans served during the war, though segregation and prejudice forced them into support positions until near the end of the war. Women joined the fight too. During the war, over 250,000 women served in many roles throughout the world, such as pilots, nurses, and mechanics. So, we declare war on Japan the next day, on December 8th. Germany and Italy declare war on the United States a few days later, and we in turn declare war on them. And now we're officially in the war, during which 16 million Americans serve in the military. Uh, women even help out by joining the Women's Army Corps, or the WAC, to do non-combat jobs like clerical workers, truck drivers, etc. Uh, for the Army. Also, the government creates the War Production War. We don't have uh, places and companies that full-time manufacture weapons during World War II like they do today. Today, we have an entire industry devoted to that stuff, a private sector industry. Back then, we didn't have it, so we have to convert uh, peacetime companies into wartime companies. For example, Ford converts its production of cars during World War II to bombers. Japan continues to expand. They kick the U.S. forces out of the Philippines, which was a U.S. territory at that point. General Douglas MacArthur vows that he shall return, and he will later on as we begin to push the Japanese back towards their home islands. In May of 1942, uh, you know, five, six months after the attack, 75,000 Allied forces surrender in the Philippines, and they force the prisoners of war, the Japanese do, to march 55 miles through jungle, hot, you know, they don't give them food, they don't give them much water, so 7,000 U.S. and Filipino troops die along the way, and that's known as the Bataan Death March. So things are looking down, but there is some hope. Here you can see where Japan has taken over in 1942. All these islands, uh, Burma, French Indochina, which is Vietnam, Siam, the Dutch East Indies, New Guinea, takes over all this area. There is some hope because the Doolittle Raids are an immediate attempt to strike back against Japan, and that can be seen in the movie uh, Pearl Harbor. So American bombers fly off aircraft carriers. They usually weren't light enough, but they specially made these bombers to fly off the aircraft carriers and bomb Tokyo, and then they don't have enough fuel to get back, so they keep going and they crash lands in Japanese-controlled China. So it's a very, very um, risky maneuver. The people who did it were very brave, but those are known as the Doolittle Raids after their uh, creator. Uh, also, the Battle of Coral Sea between the United States and Japan. It's the first naval batter, uh, battle in history where ships have no sight of each other and airplanes attacked each of the ships in the battle. And it was an American victory. So these two, American, these two events give Americans a sense of confidence. And that is how we enter the war. It's a quick look at Pearl Harbor. We'll talk more about it in class. And I will see you later. Goodbye.